never knew that you like them thick mm, I've been carrying this weight in a world beneath these braids and I'm confused would you take the pain that came with all the parts you want to claim for you No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's honored to be here with you all today. I give God praise for the Reverend Al Sharpton. Thank you so much for this opportunity of sharing your platform with me. To Dr. Franklin and all of the youth huddle and Miss Ashley Sharpton. Yeah. The head of the youth huddle. Thank you all so much for this opportunity. I'm so happy that I have my parents here with me, my brother Malik and my auntie Louise Roundtree. Love you all so much. The Bible says in Philippians 3 verse 14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. My subject this morning is one word. I want to help somebody with this one word. And that one word is up. I am going to require your assistance in delivering this message this morning. But every time I point in this direction, I need you to shout back to me the word up. Can you do that real quickly? Let's practice real quick. Up. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Okay. All of our lives, from the time that we've come into the world, there has been a dark agenda to keep you down. A sinister plan to keep you from reaching the heights that God has uniquely designed you to rise to. We are suddenly introduced to the darkness and downward thinking from our infancy. Listen to these familiar lyrics. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his cry. And wait, then Jill came tumbling after. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. Ring around the rosy, pocket full of posies. Ashes, ashes, we all fall down. Or maybe this one is a little clearer for you. Mary J. Blige said, I'm going down. Cause you ain't around. My whole world's upside down. Fabian <laughs> Whitehead said, if you've ever been held down before, I know that you refuse to be held down anymore. The Apostle Paul said that it's a fight to overcome and rise. He said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the higher calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And here's the truth. Pressing is pushing. And isn't that our story? We've been pushing up for quite some time now. We've been pushing Past everything that was designed to weigh us down. Amen. Poverty and low earnings, voting rights and gun violence, criminal justice reform and broken educational systems. Like a rose in concrete, somehow we keep pushing up. There are dark forces who are threatened by our potential and our possibility. Hey. They know that God made a divine deposit in you and I. Yes. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, I know the plans yes. that I have for your life. Can I get a witness? Yes. They're plans of good and not of evil. Look, they're plans to give you hope for your future. Listen, they are plans to move you up. Amen. The devil knows and he cannot take away from you the deposit that God has given you. But if he can kill you before you discover what you possess, wow. then the devil wins. Wow. And here's the reality. Dreams and dreamers have always been under threat. Yes, sir. Especially when they threaten mediocrity. 
when they threaten dysfunction and mistruths, when they threaten old paradigms. And if you are not careful, the devil will intimidate you and turn your little house on the prairie dream into a nightmare on Elm Street. But you have got to hold your head up and declare, I am a promise. I'm filled with possibility. I possess incredible potential. And devil, I ain't scared of you. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound of mind. And if God be for us, who can be against us? I came to speak to some dreamers in this house today. You are not what the world titles you. You are not what the world says you are. You are not a loser. You are not trash. You are not a statistic, a thug, a baby mama. You are not a fight, a pimp, a criminal. You are not the B word, but listen, you are royal. You are chosen by God. You are a winner, and you are all a funeral 
devil that tells a dead boy, wake up. He, he, stop, he tells a dead girl, Talitha Kumi, which means little girl, rise up. He tells Lazarus after four days in the grave, Lazarus, get up. I'm done, but they made a tragic mistake at Calvary. It wasn't the nails in his hands. It wasn't the thorns on his head. It wasn't the spear in his side. But the mistake they made at Calvary was that they forgot what Jesus said. And they should have never lifted the cross up. Remember when he said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? Who is the King of Glory, the Lord God, strong and mighty, the Lord God, almighty in power. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Listen, your help, my help, our help is up. I dare you to look at your name. And say, neighbor, neighbor, let's go. God bless you. Let's go.
So I'll tell you, I have been reflecting recently that among Dr. King's many gifts was his ability to understand the present moment in the context of a vision for a better future. So now in that spirit then, let us clearly understand the moment we are in. A moment in which our hard won freedoms are under attack. Because just look at where we are. Extremists across our country attack the freedom to vote. They ban books to attempt to erase America's full history. They attack the ability of people to love openly with pride. They attack the freedom of a woman to make decisions about her own body instead of the government. They attack medication that for 20 years the FDA ruled as being safe. And just yesterday in Florida, extremists there signed a six-week ban before most women even know they're pregnant. And then, isn't it interesting that in the midst of all these attacks on fundamental freedoms, these so-called leaders dare to tell us they are fighting for our freedoms. Don't you find that interesting? Some have gone so far as to name and brand their agenda the quote, freedom blueprint. Don't fall for the okie doke. Don't fall for the okie doke. Because as we know, freedom, well, it doesn't censor books. Freedom does not criminalize doctors and punish women. Freedom does not turn off a microphone when an elected leader is speaking. And you see, as Dr. King made clear, freedom includes the ability of all people to fully exercise their rights. Rights that generations of Americans bled and died for rights that the people in this very room continue to march and fight for. Mm -hmm. That is our nation's freedom blueprint. And that is what we stand for. And I do believe that when you know what you stand for, mm -hmm. you know what to fight for. Yes. Are only 13% of America's population. That's right. 
but more than 60% of homicide victims from gun violence. Wow. Meanwhile, as Rev said, we speak here while the NRA is holding its convention in Indiana. Now, you know what they've called it? They have called it a, quote, freedom-filled weekend. So we must ask, freedom-filled for who exactly? Because it's not for the parents who pray that their children will come home from school safe, from a classroom in Uvalde or Nashville, not for those who pray that their loved ones will come home safe from a bank in Louisville, Kentucky, from a grocery store in Buffalo, or from everyday gun violence in communities across our nation. Let us all declare enough is enough. Enough is enough. Can't we all agree that when there is biased policing 
an excessive force that it must be met with accountability? <laughs>
recent attack that we have seen in an attempt to silence the voice of the people. Which, by the way, let's all be clear and we know, is an attack on democracy itself. And just go back two years to see the pattern. We go farther back than that, but let's just go back two years. In 2020, NAN helped turn out record numbers of voters during the height of a pandemic. <laughs> anticipated and did result in, for example, an historic $5.8 billion invested in our HBCUs. A vote that resulted in the first black woman to serve on the United States Supreme Court. Her name is Justice. on our 
affirmative agenda while we are handling all those attacks. Mm -hmm. Because we will not fully, I believe, achieve the dream of freedom until it includes economic justice for all. Right. A justice that protects the dignity of work and the basic rights of all people. So in conclusion, Anne, there's a lot I can say, but I'm just gonna go with it. Um, <laughs> I think there is one bottom line that is for sure. We all love our country. Yeah. We do, we love our country. That's yeah. why we fight so hard. Yeah. We love our country. And we stand in the long tradition of those who have faithfully believed in the founding principles of our nation. But at this moment, the founding principles are under attack. Yes. And I believe always, and especially today, that the strength of our nation depends on us each to fulfill our duty. Yes, I said our duty to stand and protect our democracy. And so specifically then, I will speak to the young leaders who are here. Rev, you are always lifting up our young leaders. Remember to the young leaders I say, remember, Reverend Sharpton was only 16 when he founded his first organization, the National Youth Movement. 16. <laughs> Diane Nash was just 21 years old when she led the Nashville Synod. John Lewis was only 23 when he spoke during the March on Washington. Yes. And it is no coincidence that the two expelled members of the Tennessee Three are both in their 20s. 